the one that I remember my grandmother telling me, and I tell the kids that, I said, you know, this is the one I remember the most because it would be all, always at nap time. And she would be like, you know, going through my hair with her hand, and, and, um, and then she would be telling me the story, and you know, you, you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it also teaches a lesson. But here's the story that um, she told me. It was about coyote and fox. And coyote and fox were always trying to trick each other. Who was going to outdo the other one? And so this one day, it was a really hot, hot summer day. And coyote hadn't eaten in so long. Oh, he was so hungry. And you, he was so hungry that you could see the ribs on his, on his, you know, on his body. And uh, he'd been walking a long time over the prairie, couldn't find anything. And all he could think of was, oh, he said, oh my, if I could just find myself a nice fat prairie chicken, I would take that prairie chicken and I would make a fire and I would cook that. And, oh, it would just taste so good. And he, he could just taste it. So he started along and looking for a prairie chicken to eat. About that time, wouldn't you know what, Fox was following him. And Fox hadn't eaten in a long, long time too. And so he just thought, you know, I'm going to play a trick on Coyote, but I'm going to follow him and see what happens. So sure enough, Coyote come over a hill, and down below there was a tree, and there was a shaded area, and under that tree, Coyote could see here was a nice fat prairie chicken. He was picking on the ground and eating the bugs and the seeds, and Coyote went, ah, I'm going to get that prairie chicken. So he very quietly, he walked over there, and he got that prairie chicken and he plucked all the feathers off it and then he got the wood and he made a fire and then he put that prairie ch chicken on a stick and he put it there and he said you know what I am so hungry and I'm so tired that I'm all worn out you know what I'm just gonna rest against that tree take a little nap so put his clothes to size and of course about that time I asked the kids what do you think is gonna happen you know anyway about that time, when you know it, Fox had been watching him. Fox came over the hill and looked. Sure enough, there was Coyote sleeping and Prairie Chicken. So he went down there and he grabbed that Prairie Chicken off the fire and he ran over the hill and oh, he had the best meal. Mm, he just was eating it. He thought, now for my trick. So he picked up all the bones and he ran down very quietly by Coyote and he put it right alongside where his head was. And then very quietly he took the grease from his face and he patted it ever so gently on Coyote's mouth. And then he ran over the hill and he watched. <laughs> Pretty soon Coyote, after a nice rest, he woke up and he stretched out his arms and he went, oh, now I can eat my prairie chicken. And he looked over at his fire. Where's my prairie chicken? And he thought, what happened to it? And all of a sudden he looked down at the ground beside him and there were the bones. And he licked his lips, he went, tastes like prairie chicken. Oh, I must have been so hungry that I ate that prairie chicken when I was sleeping. But why am I still hungry? So as he's walking off, Fox is laughing and laughing. <laughs> so that's the story. And the part that I love the most was when my grandma would tell that, she, you could taste it. She, the description and the way that she, you almost like, oh, I want to eat some chicken, you know? <laughs> but that was, that was a short, short story. But there are many, many, Sanish have many, many stories that are about coyote and fox. And um, um, there's others. My, we share stories. My brothers shared some with us too. And, and it's amazing the things, because you ask the kids, uh, what lesson did you learn from that? Um, don't count your chickens before they're hatched, or, or you know, don't fall asleep, you know, when you're, or something like that, you know. So, yeah, there's many, many of them. You know. But there's something about telling a story that um, for children that is mystical. I mean, it's you know, I think it's so important.